It couldn't be your fault When his life and mine will fall It will always be my call Trying to throw this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me Why they throwing shade on me Like they ashamed on me I thought what age are we uh -huh. It's warm outside And we all won't shine Let you know about it in the city Cause stay in the crib this time Whoa Got pics on the way like a vacay Shoot photo with the AK Got friends by my side Trying to have a great day And I wonder why they throw shades Yeah But it's all on me Let them roam free Like a European Yeah See me pick up the phone Like I'm trying to haul a home Starting to act like E.T. Yeah Rock them shades Now they can't see me Trying to run away But I'm not speedy Need no fake, I just want what's real And I ride that way till I'm free, yeah Trying to throw yeah. this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me No rage Evening Good evening, how is one? I'm alright, I'm alright Another Sunday, eh? Yeah But a nice relaxed weekend, which has been nice I've done nothing There's a surprise Hey, it's nice, <laughs> it's nice Nice. Yes. How's your week been? It's been good, actually. It's been very stressful. I can't quite keep hold of things. Is it? I can't quite. I can't keep on top of things, should I say? Which I think is the opposite of what you are, aren't you? I'm organised. I'm finally on top of things. Yeah, that's finally, good. Finally, finally got got it back. Um, brought. I have got stock in. Um, it's not advertised, which it will be next week. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good about myself. Everybody's pulled together. Team's pulled together well, mate. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the way we're going now. We can get on. Good. The only thing that's got me this week is the campsite open fully. And I don't like it. Yes. These people are back. Mm. <laughs> I've had nobody around for two months, Shane. It's been nice. Yeah, there's but... people walking around. I'm like, oh, oh, don't come across this line. This is my area. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you have many to buy? Five at least this week. Mm. Five at least. I'm trying to get, I think, eight by the end of the week. By Thursday, ideally. Still got a lot of dealers asking for stock? Yeah, there's a few, yeah. There's a few. Get me regular daily phone calls from a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Should we have some shout outs? Far away. What have we got, mate? Cabin fever, evening guys. Hope you are both okay. No, this yeah, one I don't, okay. I don't. I don't think I want to bring up this next one. Oh, I don't bring it up. Good evening, Jason Shane. What's all this about? I hope not. I hope not too. But it could be. But it should be. What it might be, what it is. Next one, Jim Page. Evening, guys. Hope you had a good week. Yeah, Joe Marino. Look at that camera he's got there, mate. Have you seen it? Look at the lens on that. It's a bit long, isn't it? Isn't it just about that's a few quid's worth. Mm -hmm. Just sold a '94 San Marino Renault Traffic and now own a 2001 Box Auto Sleeper Sympathy. Sympathy, <laughs> symphony. Any advice on what to look out for, and in what way, Joe? Because you've already just brought an auto sleeper symphony. <laughs> um, they're a great band, they are the auto sleeper symphonies, mate, aren't they? They're pretty solid, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they've been going a fair few years. That model has good fun. Do you know anything about that San, uh, San Remo work, Shane? No, me. 94. No, no. God, how time flies. On the Renault traffic as well, you don't get any Renaults around really now. Oh, I don't like a Renault. I have I nothing don't. No, I don't either. Nothing yeah. Problem. Good job of sold it, Joe. But you've got a good van there, Auto Sleeper Symphony. Um, yeah, dead impressed with the with the, They're just a good solid van, aren't they? Good starter van as well. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I think the only thing to look forward for for on it is just the, the chassis itself, just any rust or anything like that that can happen on them at that, that sort of age. That's yeah. the thing that I really look for. Yeah, just, just just get it serviced when it should be serviced, to be honest. 
Ah, uh, what's yeah. that? That's gonna be on a two liter, isn't it? Most likely, yeah. Or yeah. one point no, nine, one point nine. Yeah, Peugeot. Yeah. Yeah. The caravan notes. Evening, Jason Shane. Evening, evening. Rolling with the Robsons. Good evening, you too. Good evening to you. How many Robinsons are there? Could be one, could be two, could be three, could mm. be four. We don't know. But we might find out soon. Rachel Moo, hi guys. I hope it's not the end of your show. Greg, good evening, lads. Evening, Greg. Ivan Sackwell, evening, gentlemen. Hope you had a good weekend. Yeah, I did have a good repair. You recharge the battery sometimes, Shane, don't you? You did it last week, mate, didn't you? Yeah, I did them it again. Uh, I did it again yesterday, to be fair. Yesterday was a recharge day because well, I'm a bit, I don't get anxious. Well, I do get anxious, but I'm anxious about how bloody busy this week's going to be. I'm a bit nervous about it. In what way? I just don't think I'll. I just don't think I'll see home this week. What with picking up? Yeah. Well, you just go out the house. You go pick the van up. You drop it off, and you come home. I've got two by nine o'clock in the morning. You've got two to pick up by nine o'clock. Yes. Where are they? Worcester and Sirencester. Where's Sirencester? Strange. It was, it's an area where you get strange people from. <laughs> that, that sort of neck of the woods. I think we've, we've got John on speaking of later, I think, haven't we? Johnny. That's <laughs> if we get that far, mate. I know, yeah. That's true. Scud and the stick. Evening all. Hope all all well. Mark Cote. Evening, gents. Evening, Mark. Caravan Shorts. Evening all. Been a good day for shorts, hasn't it? It has been a good Phil day. Phil and Taz Green. Hi, guys. Hope you're both good. Still selling and buying loads. Marty Sills. Hi, Jason and Shane from Sunny Lincolnshire. Okay. Steve Edwards. Good evening. Looking forward to the show. Available today. Hi, guys. Here you are 13 weeks in. In here. Lubbin Lord. Oh, look. he's what he we go. Lubbin Lord. Lubbid, Lubbid, is it Lubbid Lud? Lubbid Lud, Lubbid Lud, Lub, Lud, Lubbid Lub. Hi, fellas. Yeah, so it's a lucky 13, I think, isn't it, today? Mm -hmm. mm. Any more? Greg, it's not all about the size, it's how you use it. That's an old new conversation altogether, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can't mm. sing, I've never been able to sing. Joe Marina sold it with it with it with forty three thousand on the clock. That's crazy, isn't it? Nineteen ninety four with forty three thousand on the clock. It's nothing. I know. It's amazing how you can wind the clocks back on them at that age, isn't it? I wouldn't know, man. <laughs> Phil and Taz Green. Hey guys, have my motor invalided and sealed today. Why don't you do a section on your show about maintaining, cleaning, etc.? Best products to use. That could have been a good idea. Hmm. We did. We sort of talk, talked about doing one of them during lockdown, didn't we? What? Maintaining and cleaning them? Yeah. Cleaning video, more than anything. And yeah, start... I, went, I started to do one and I struggled with it. I got the weather, the weather all went pear shaped on me, to be honest. I, I did one and I've actually got the video, but I, I don't know if you remember. I, I think I spent eight hours editing it up for the software to crash and lose everything. And that was about two months ago, and I've not had the not had it in me to go back to it. <laughs> I lost my head with it. I'll we wounded. We wounded by. Oh it. yeah. Oh, I took yeah. a day doing that. <laughs> the Beckwiths. Good evening, the Beckwiths. Joe Marino, new van is clean as you like. No rust. One point nine turbo diesel. We guessed right, Shane. You said two liter. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> Are we get over it? Point one. Yeah, I'm an amateur wildlife photographer. So long lens is a must. Hey, they ain't cheap either. Here we motor right. our evening, guys. Rolling with the Robsons. There are five of us in Rolling with the Robsons. Six if you count the puppy Luna. Luna. Andrew, is this the last one? Shall we have a chat? Yeah, we've just got a couple more chat-outs. Okay. Lisa and Phil, whereabouts in Worcestershire? 
Worcestershire. Uh, Worcestershire. It's uh, Droit, getting towards Droit, which I think that way. So it's probably, is that on the border of Worcestershire? I'm not sure. There we go. Charming the chain. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. So what's Do your, you have a uh, chat? Not really. I don't really want to have this chat. I feel like you, you know when you know when you know that you, your girlfriend's breaking up with you. Not that it's ever happened to me, obviously, but you know when that feeling's coming. It's not you, mate. It's not you. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's not you. No, it's not. How long can we do this show now? Three months. Well, apparently, then we've 30, 13 weeks plus one because we did the one the show with no name. Was it the show that never was? That was the one. Yeah. I love that show. That was, that was still one of my favourite shows. I love that show. We've never recreated that yet again, have we? Hmm. Probably because it was the first one. It's a long time, mate, three months, and I hate to get stale. I hate to get stale. I hate to keep things running for the sake of keeping things running. And I think what happened was we did Grand Adventures. Was it Mark on Grand Adventures? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, we've had some great guests on. We've had Bob, we've had, oh, we had Dan from the Trudgeons as well. Lots of YouTubers on, really good guests. Um, and then we had we had Mark on, didn't we, from Grand Adventures, and he, he just blew me away. What a great, great person. He was just very engaging, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And after the show, I thought, how do I beat it? It's bloody hard work, Shane, trying to keep finding people to talk. I think we had it easy, mate, when we were in lockdown, didn't we? Because we just threw ourselves into the social media log, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And then we had a problem, didn't we? We went back to work. People have been stuck in their house for three months. And then they were let out. And they all wanted to go on holiday. And the only yeah. way they could go on holiday was by a caravan or a motorhome. Yes. And it just went nuts. And so what's your point? Well, we did open mic and I loved open mic, mate. I, oh, I buzz so much off open mic. But then when the, when the curtain goes goes down, tell me when the curtain closes and we've got to start again. I think the motor room shows ran its course, mate. Right. You could have probably told me this before the show, just to not. Well, you never answered your phone, did you, yesterday? No, I never actually know. I saw I saw your name on it. Well, I think it's had a good run, mate. It's, it, it's had a good run. We we we've really enjoyed it, and there's only I think I think so far there's only so far we can take it. We're working every day, and then we're we're trying to get a show together, and and I just don't want to go stale, mate. So I think I think that's it, mate. I think that's it. I think let's leave it on a high. We've got good views, we've done a good show, and then let's move on and just, just evolve, mate, into, into something yeah. else. Yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think, as far as I'm concerned, that's me done. Oh. I've enjoyed it, mate. I've enjoyed it. So what are you going to do I now? Am. I'm going to go, mate. All right, I'm going to go. Is that, is that, has he just gone? Is it is he gone for everybody else? Uh, okay. Um, all right. We'll just have to uh, we'll just have to do this. Introducing the new the Caravan and Motorhome Show of the Motorhome and Caravan Show. You decide. Do you really think we were going to go? <laughs> do you really think we were going to go? <laughs> Come on, uh, you're gonna let me mock us go by himself, no chance. So what right. have we got planned? We've got planned. Simple, mate. We've had to evolve. We have to evolve. We can't just keep going along and going along. We have to evolve. You look at your people like you take your people like Madonna. How long has she been going? She's been evolving. And we have to evolve years. as well, mate. And that's where we go. We've been starting to get a lot of caravanners coming onto the uh, watching us and starting to get involved and i think sometimes i find they don't ask the questions or or get too involved because uh, 
because it's the motorhome show and i think we need to spread our wings mate we ought to bring in the caravanners in it we ought to obviously keep our motorhomes in and we ought to i'm pumped about this i'm pumped about, i've had a new release of life it's the caravan yeah. and motorhome show that you put but i'm calling it the motorhome and caravan show it's the motorhome and caravan show what do you think uh, I'm pretty impartial to it, really. I, th I think it could be either. I mean, um, I, I've got, I don't really know. I don't know what to say about it, really. What do you think? I, I don't know. Well, we'll ask everybody out there. The Motor Home and Caravan Show. And again, yes, we were back at work, mate. We were finding it really hard, weren't we, uh, to do everything. So we, we've reached out and asked for help. And people just want to help. So we're going to start doing motorhome reviews, mate. We're going to start doing motorhome videos for a couple of minutes and show people different motorhomes. We're going to get more input off people and tell us what you want to see. We're going to start asking the industry and we're going to get uh, Mark on every week, aren't we? Yep, and Mark, we've John, to be fair, doing... Uh, Do you want to bring Mark on? Review. Doing caravan reviews as well. Don't forget that bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to bring Mark on? Hi, Mark. Right. Hi. So you're going to be oh, talking about the industry... Yeah? You're going to be talking about the industry, mate. You're going to be talking and reviewing some caravans for the caravan people, and we're going to have a look at some yeah. different caravans. Yeah. No, we're, going to, good idea. we're going to cover technical again with Ask Lee, who's very popular, and we're going to actually start John's jewels off, and we're going to be covering different campsites. Do you want to bring in um, John? Hi. I bet you didn't think there's going to be a show tonight, <laughs> did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I did have a little panic on when you went. I was like, hang on, where's he gone? <laughs> I didn't, it was quite nice. Um, lads, thanks for the call to action. Um, I think uh, we get no benefit from this. Uh, we, we, we just want to do a good show caravans about motorhomes, about the leisure industry, uh, talking about the industry itself john with yourself to the different sides and i think we've got to try and cover everything to do with motorhoming and caravanning john what do you think yeah definitely caravanning and motorhoming that's where it's at no, motor um, and caravanning. no caravan and motorhome it rolls off the tongue a lot better the caravan and motorhome show J jason i'm just going to ask again what's the name of your company campers and caravans <laughs> Is it not caravans and campers? <laughs> it depends how you say it. <laughs> so I'm just googling your side now. What's it? Oh, look at that caravans and campers. Okay, I'm happy for the people, whatever the people wanted. If they wanted the caravan or motor road show, they can. But I know they're all going to go with me and go for the motor road and caravan show. Put, 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 it in the, put, put it in the chat now. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the motorhome and caravan show or do you prefer the caravan and motorhome show? Phil, it's, it's already right. obvious. No, it's the Motor Rebel Caravan obvious. Show, or you've got a choice, the Motor Rebel Caravan Show or the Motor Rebel Caravan Show. You decide, people. Okay? Basically, you've got a choice as long as it's the Caravan and Motor Rebel Show. And if it's not the Caravan and Motor Rebel Show, it's the Caravan and Motor Rebel Show. I think everyone will pick that anyway. It just it doesn't sound right, Motor Rebel and Caravan Show. <laughs> Yeah, so no, let us know if um, you want any caravans reviewing uh, with Mark, and Mark will do his best to get into the different caravans. Anything you want to know about the industry, Mark will try and answer it for you. Right, let's get rid of Mark. You can come on later. Yes. And then John as well. With John, we call it John's Jaunts, aren't we? I think, yeah, it seems to be working, John's Jaunts. Yeah. See, Jeff yeah. Foster, the Motor Home and Caravan Show. Um, but, yeah, John, you're going to be doing... Um, uh, all different uh, places, and anybody yeah. wants to get involved and just uh, drop your line saying where you want where you want you to. Um, yeah, it doesn't it right. doesn't necessarily have to be a, a a site that I've been to. If it's if it's a particularly as a site that you've been to um, and you loved it, drop us a message. And um, although I may not have been there, um, I can still have a look on the um, on uh, the websites, have a look around, and and do as best as I can a bit of a review on it. If I can get to there. Then I'll get up there and uh, give the site a review myself. Sounds good. Look at Jason. He's looking through the comments. Here. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah. I am. He's, 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 he's wondering why I've only been picking up the. He's only. Been, he's wondering why I've only been picking up the Carol and Motro show comments and ignoring the rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, think we had a few, I think we had a few people earlier, didn't we, mate? 
Do you know? Do you, yeah, oh yeah, I know. Yeah, let's let's just go back to some of those comments. Yeah, cool. Um, oh, I don't worry. Where, where are we? Where are we? Phil and Taz Green, guys, I know it's your time, but don't give up being here since day one. Why don't you ask for suggestions from your followers? Phil and Taz Green, bang us some ingestions. Ingestions. Suggestions. <laughs> and we'll inject it. Feeling burnt out. No, it's not a case of feeling burnt out. It's You, you can only take things so far. And me and Sh I, I, I'm going to speak for Shane as well, and he'll, he'll agree with me. We love doing this show. We love doing it. But sometimes you can only take things as far as you can take them. We were noticing a lot of caravan has started to come on, but we needed help. It's hard to do a two-hour show, just a pair of us, when you're actually working 12 hours a day. Now, Luke, I don't want any sympathy or anything like that because we enjoy doing it. And at the end of the day, <laughs> I'll go and get if you want. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, we, we called out for our and fair play to you, George, straight in there. And then, yeah, I want a piece of this. Yeah, it's 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 a great little show. Uh, as people may have seen on my channel or on Dan Trudgeon's channel, we do our, our um, podcast, our Caravan Coffee and Cake podcast, and it's a different. It's a recording, but it's it's three three of us having a chat about caravans and, and what we're up to and what's going on um, in in that world. And for for Dan to come on your show and then for you guys to invite me on, it's been great. It's lovely. It's it's a real good laugh. And doing it live, there's there's a certain amount of um, new pressure that's involved. You can't just go, damn, I'll just re-record that bit. It's it's live. It's great. And and looking at the comments, everybody's comments uh, is brilliant. Being able to d interact with yeah. your, the people that are watching live oh, is brilliant. Oh, I love it, mate. Jill Nichols, it's time to close. Yeah, I, I spotted that one, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that boring, am I? It's time for me to go. Yeah, see you later, George. See you on George George. Go on. Bye. See you later, Bye. mate. <laughs> Greg, Shane, you dumped... You've been dumped by social media. I'll be sad to see you gone. <laughs> it's, it's going to continue, guys. Jason's gone. <laughs> okay. Wind up, wind up of the year. Very funny, Andrew. Jane Powell, you had me there. Uh, Lisa, Lisa and Phil, oh, very funny. Tony the Ted, love that, made me smile. Well done. Um, I can't put down... What the wife said, nice to see you back, Greg. <laughs> Steve Webb was just about to turn it off now. Like, we did that well, mate, didn't we? Yeah, I, I was trying not to smile. It was, I was just I know. I know. I know. Right. Um, before we move on and start with the Caravan and Motorhome Show, the Motorhome and Caravan Show, uh, don't forget, put your comments in on what you want it to be called because it's your show at the end of the day, basically. So, what we're going to do the last Sunday of every month is going to be open mic. Now, there's no rules in open mic. We're having no agenda whatsoever, basically. We have the facility to get you on right away. All you've got to do is follow me on Twitter. It's Campers and Caravans. It's SY45RP, and I'll follow you back. <laughs> or on Instagram, I'm the Motorhome and Caravan Man. Follow me and I'll follow you back. You can also subscribe to our YouTube, my YouTube channel, actually, which is the Motorhome Man. And Shane, any other ways people can get in touch with us? Yeah, you can get in touch. Uh, subscribe to me as well, please. That's We Buy Any Motor Caravan. And then we've also got the email, which uh, I feel like we need to change this slide. Yeah, we're going to have to change that, mate. <laughs> and all the branding and everything else like that. Yeah. Well, the Motorhome Show at gmail.com. So next Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. It's going to be open mic. So anyone can come on. Come on, ask ask a question. Come say hello. Just uh, promote your YouTube channel. Just send us an email. We'll send you an email straight back with a link, and you can come straight on. Just like the last open mic we did, we had Rolling with the Robsons on. We had uh, Extreme Motor Adventures, didn't we? Who else did we yes. have? Right? Uh what the, uh, uh, was it that caravan shorts guy yeah yeah, yeah we, had it, we had him on so you can just come on straight away and there's going to be no rule we're going to ask go through all the questions on all the comments and there's just 
no rules we're just going to bounce for an hour two hours however long you want and then if you want to come on come on and ask away and uh, there we go shall we move on mate yes so we're going to start with motor own reviews and i'm going to start my little motor own review and then somebody has to go do better ideal starter van now an ideal starter motor home shouldn't be too big for the first time roughly between 2001-2005 and i picture an ideal <clears throat> starter van shape it's a Bessie car here, E415. It has a four berth because um, you have got the sleeping above and then you've also got the, the two bench seats that you can make up into a bed as well. The problem with it, it is that it's only got two seat belts. But something like that, you're going to be picking up from dealers for anywhere between the 16 and 19,000 with 30 to 50,000 miles on. Just show us inside, mate. So you can see there you've got the bench seats. And then you've got the kitchen area at the back with the fridge, hobs, grill, oven. And then to the left-hand side will be the bathroom with the shower and toilet. Now, these vans, I love the old Bessie cars because they're built properly. The wood on them. The, 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 what do you think there, mate? Good build, that is. I think the other thing I do like about the best cars is that age is the upholstery. For something of that age, it was quite modern. Yeah. With some bloody horrible upholstery that the uh, that the Bessie car did go into there's one that is uh, is baby sick brown it's just horrible it's like a half leather but that's quite nice actually and like, like you said as long as the wood's nice I mean you can you you know a way to uh, to bring the the wood back in them don't you tea coil that's the one tea coil about three quid from anywhere being uh, Wilkinson's anything like that three quid um, and it just brings the wood right back up again. Just rub it in. Um, and yeah, but there, there you've got them. And you've got everything you want for a starter van. You've got, like I say, you've got your bed seats there. They'll pull out to make a double bed. You can make them as singles as well because you can turn the cat the, the front seats round. They'll swivel round. You've got a bit of prep area there and you've got everything you need for a starter van to get yourself out motor around. And I do quite like how. I guess what's the, what's the unit on the right hand side next to the right hand bench seat? So whatever it's it is, it's got a nice yeah, piece of, uh, of, pre of okay cupboard. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, the fridge is at the back. It's got a nice yeah. bit of prep service. That's service. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and then up and above on the left hand side, you can put your tally in. Yes. So, so here's a question for you. Don't answer this if you don't know because it I could. Can't see you. Hey, I can't see you. Oh, okay. Oh no, I'm sorry. I forget you missed me. What's the what's the laws on bench seats and travelling, mate? It's a grey area. It's a very very grey area. If you side on or your backs to the driver, you don't necessarily have to have a seat belt. It's a little bit like mini buzzies. If you're forward facing, then you have to wear a seat belt because if there's a if there's a crash, you're going to go forward. I don't agree with it, and I don't promote it either. If no. I find out these kids going in that van, I wouldn't be selling that van if these kids going in that mate, because there's not seatbelts there, provisions for it. That's why, even though that's a four berth, I will tell everybody that is a two berth motor home because there isn't the seatbelts there, and it's a grey area. Uh, my argument is, if something did happen, are the insurance companies going to agree with it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I had my rant last week about dogs in motor homes not being strapped down, let alone humans. Although I do put them on a similar level, <laughs> I've got it in there. Yeah, it, it's my big bugbear in the motor home industry, mate. If, it's got, if, you, if you want to call it a four berth, put four seat belts in. If you want to call it a six berth, put six seat belts in. Simple. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and that's what they did. I think that, they're starting to do that in the new stuff, mate. Yeah, there's a, there's a few makes that do it, isn't there? Um, Eldest was the one that really took the ball by by the horns in 2014, I think, and they put the pop top pop pop up seats uh, into place. So the only negative is you do lose that storage under the front bench seats, but front front bench seats are so much more comfortable than uh, what you know, you the half dinette. What have you got to show me? Right, okay, so a new part of the show. So this is a trial, so to, if you don't like it, please let us know. But yeah, so I've got uh, a roller team, and uh, here we go. 
Well, here we are. It's the first motorhome review for the caravan and motorhome show. Not the motorhome and caravan show. Just forget all those strange people. Anyway, so here it is. It's a proper family van. And when I say it's a proper family van, it's a seven berth with six belted seats. So it's the Roller Team Auto Roller 707. It's 7.33 metres in length, three and a half tonne. So that means it can be driven on the restricted car licence car license and it is a manageable size it has a payload of about 508 kilograms as well which comes really in handy this one has had the Fiamma awning fitted it does miss some bits on these motorhome but we do have things like the fly screen on the door which is a nice option and we do have at the rear this nice big garage door and this what this nice big garage door does this rear bunk bed folds up so you can chuck all the bikes in in the back and then take everything out when you do get to the site that you're on. Let's go and have a look inside. So inside this motorhome, we do have two L-shaped seating areas. This is the one with the rear facing seats. This does turn into one single bed. And then on the other side, with the help of this table, we do have another L-shaped seating area. And this does have two forward facing seats with belts. And this turns into a double bed. So without taking the drop down bed all the way down, because you can see the cupboards or the lockers do hit the back rest so make sure you remove them it does turn into an effectively a bunk bed system so you've got a double bed at the top and three beds below but it just shows you how much versatility this motorhome does actually have to finish off with the seven berths we do have bunk beds at the, at the back we can see the ladder which gets you to the top bunk and we do have the lower bed as well they are very nice and wide, I've got to say, for two single beds. And with that garage system, that bottom bunk does fold all the way up and you can chuck your bikes in the back or whatever, awnings, everything that you need uh, for that nice trip away. The kitchen itself, it is a UK spec, so it means it does have the cooker in it or the oven. Nice LED lights all the way throughout. And if I just point the camera down a little bit, you can see that blue lighting at the lower levels. You do have a three hob burner and sink opposite and if we go and spin round to the other side of the kitchen where we have a wardrobe and storage to the left a nice slim line white fridge to the right it's a bit small for something that is going to be carrying seven people or six people but it'll do for a family on a, on a short break even though i do find this motorhome is a little bit tacky in places the lights i don't find very stable is the best way to put it it does have the truma uh, heating system which is a pretty damn good heating system for something of this budget which is around fifty thousand pounds in 2018 which has gone up uh, slightly by a few thousand pounds for the 2020 models the bathroom continues with these nice argo taps this one does double up as a shower uh, we've got the nice modern type cassette toilet by thetford and then we've got a window just to keep uh, those smells out and something I do like about this toilet is there is plenty of leg space so you can actually sit down on it without uh, having your knees around your ears and there we have what is the separate shower unit it ends up being which is where the sink is stored as well so yeah so it's a great family berth motorhome different variation to the others that we're going to show you today with it being a seven berth with six belted seats, it is a very rare thing indeed. Three and a half tons, 7.33 meters, everything you want for a family motorhome. <laughs> you. Um, oh. the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got yours next week. I don't know what you're saying <laughs> that for now. Um, Straight to the point, mate, actually, Fergus. I have seen it before, folks. Uh, it's typical. European layout, mate. It is, yes. But it, yeah. it is the UK spec at the same time. Yeah. Um, With the door on the right and left hand side. And you notice a lot of these vans now are trying to be an A class. How do you mean? With the look. The low profile look. The look. The look outside. <laughs> oh, the look. Sorry. They do, yes. Yeah, the low, low profile and with that drop down bed as well. Good weight on it as well, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it's a proper family van, really. There's not how many. I'm struggling to think of any seven berth vans, seven berth motorhomes out there. 
you, yeah, do you know what? I, I, I like them slim line uh, fridges, mate. Yeah. I do yeah. like them because the thing is, Gary Squire, when you say UK spec, Urban Cuckoo, what do foreign brands have? So you tend to find on the European models that they don't have the oven. They just do a lot of outdoor eating. Uh, so unless you specifically specifically ask for it, uh, even on some of the top end Cathargos and stuff like that, you don't have that oven inside because they just don't don't tend to use them in Europe. Do you know what I'm finding now with a lot of the vans, mate? Like I've just gone back to it to try and look like an A class. Um, it's got that low profile. And a lot of the vans are going that route with the drop down beds, aren't they? Yeah, above the um, above the lounge area. But yeah, but, but just like we said, like I said in the video, just because it is a three and a half ton, it does bring that under forties market into play. What year was that? Eighteen. So, how much are the new, mate? Uh, there, are, I think you, I think you can pick them up for about fifty-four thousand, brand new right now. Right. And what type of dough are you going to be paying for that? You're going to be paying early to mid forties, I'd have said. Right. Right. That sort of that sort of price range. Also, they make a good high vehicle because they, they are under that three and a half ton. They, they are, no, don't get me wrong. They, they're they're well put together, but they are a bit cheap in places. But it's the fifty grand yeah. range. Yeah. yeah. Right. We bang on and you have a love-in for the Cathargo. We've talked about it weeks and weeks in the old show. So now on the yeah. Motor Home and Caravan show, we're going to actually show you what Shane's love is. It's the Cathargo Aligner for two. And that's it. Now that's a proper A-class, Shane. It is. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, nice silver exterior. Uh, they do do two versions of this. So it's a Cathargo liner for two R53, and they also do an L as well. Well, this is one that we saw at the show, and we absolutely loved it, didn't we? Yeah, let's have a look inside, mate. That's what you fell in love with, didn't wanted. Yeah. So, so as we just go through the photos, that's this. So this is the 2020 interior. The leather, that leather is just so soft. It's incredible. But that is that is the rear U-shaped lounge, or U-ish shaped lounge. But then you've got a piece that comes out electronically that just joins it up. I will do it with those... glasses. <laughs> so it is a full U-shape lounge, but it does wrap all the way around. And on the right-hand side of that screen is a TV that pops up, which I think was about 40-inch, 42-inch. And, and that drops... lounge slides out as well, Shane, doesn't it? It does, yeah. By the kitchen. And, and it is a full berth, and at the back of that lounge, there are actually two headrests. Do you remember that? Yeah. And on the very rear of the van, our two seat belts will come out. So it does travel four as well as seat four. Yeah. Show me that kitchen, mate. I love the lines on the left hand side, mate. Yeah. And Just so. The... Flows so well. Kitchen might be a tad small. Yeah. So well, what we were talking about a minute ago with the oven, that hasn't, that hasn't got an oven. Yeah, yeah. Because they because, just don't use them in Europe. Yeah, we're going to be barbecuing outside, aren't we? Correct, yeah. And where, that's, where that left-hand side swoops up, yeah. you have, that is a coffee machine at the top. I remember, I remember. Hmm. It just looks sexy, mate, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the the quality on this one wasn't good too good but this is the bathroom itself again really nice lighting all the way through and then do you remember this little bit this is your this is one of your favorite parts wasn't it yeah we've got the shower in the skylight above if everybody can see that so that's a shower head in the skylight i need to fix one i'll have to ask Lee later that's a good point lee how are you going to fix that I'm sort of no, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, now, there's your bed, mate. Right? Would you actually think that is your cab? You'd think that's at the end of the van, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I looked at that picture the other day, mate, when you put it up, and obviously I know the van, and you would not think the driver and passenger seats are below that cab. 
No. That's what they've done so, so well. So, yeah, so that, that those twin beds, they do go up and down electronically. And then if we spin it round, it just does not look like it's the front of the motorhome, does it? No, no. It deceives you, mate, doesn't it? Yeah. But they've used that space so well. And now people have seen the pictures, you can understand why me and Shane, also Bob Earnshaw as well, banged on about this Cathargo. What a great build. Very cleverly put together, mate. Yeah, very good. So they start from £122,000. You won't so buy that £122,000, mate. And no, you won't be buying it anywhere near 122k. By the time you put your extras on and bits like that, you're getting towards 145. That's just for the base. And then if you want the the bigger ones, you're talking about 160 as a starting price. Any second hand ones on the market, mate? Struggling to find any. They just don't some. come up. I found a couple. Yeah, Go I on. found a couple um, 2019s. Um, and they're on for around about the 135 140s yeah there you go yeah, yeah there is a couple of so that, that's all i could find so, well yeah that's so that, that comes in at 7.83 meters as a starting length but it does go up and up to just over 8.5 four and a half ton to 6.7 ton depending on how much you want so you will need a c1 license to actually drive that people yeah and something Russ has just said here, um, going back to the roll team, you say it's 3,500 with a payload of 500. So what would that leave you when carrying six people and luggage? I'm going to be honest, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> a bit like most fans at the three and a half oh, ton. Napoli. Mate, it's such a great, great area, this um, laden and laden weight, isn't it? Yeah. See, there you go, yeah. Bob. Really like the lineup for two from last year. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't. Extreme Motor Home Adventures, really pricey for the line of two, but very, very nice. It is. It's a prop, it's a proper European tour, isn't it? That's the best way of putting it. Yeah, great fact. But it's even better if you in that kitchen area that Shane showed you earlier, on the floor there, there's a hatch. And if you lift the hatch up, basically that's where all the water is, so it's nice and easy to get at get at anything fixed you remember when i showed you that shame yeah there was, there was two or three hatches wasn't there because yeah. it isn't proper double floor in for saying it's got a rear lounge it's a big old garage as well yeah accessibility on that van's brilliant and i keep banging on about accessibility because if they make it come easy to fix then the longevity of a motorhome is always going to last yeah well yeah you can see the size of that garage at the back it, obviously it's, it is there is a bit cut out for the seating but it's pretty damn good. Yeah. I love it. I think it's lovely. Yeah. And there's the start of our little motorhome review, mate. Yeah. So we'll yeah. pick a few. So, on the Motorhome and Caravan Show, um, next Sunday, it's open mic and no agenda. Basically, answering every question. Anybody who wants to come on can come on. It's very easy to come on the show. Basically, you can follow me on Twitter. At Caravans and Campus at SY45RP. You can follow me on Instagram at the Motro Man. Just send me a DM and let me know you want to be on the show. Um, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, the Motro Man, do lots of hints, tips at the Motro Reviews. Any other way, Shane? Yep, or my uh, YouTube channel as well, which is We Buying a Motor Caravan. A lot of reviews, hints, and uh, similar to Jason's, really. Just probably a few more on the Motro side of things on the, the reviews. And then we've also got our oh, soon to change email of <laughs> the motorhome show at gmail.com. Yeah, so next week anybody can be on. We have the facility to get you on right now. You can email us and we just email you a link back and it brings you straight on the show. Um, so, anybody, if you just want to ask a question, if you want to push a YouTube channel, we don't mind. Come on for a quick five, ten minutes. Uh, and we're just going to have some fun, aren't we? No agenda on the yeah. motorhome and caravan show. Yeah. We will do on the uh, car on the motor home show, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> any quick shout outs, sir? Any quick uh, shout outs for me, Bob? We certainly can do. So, uh, well, let's just get through some of these silly comments to start off with. Motor home and car on show all day long. Here we caravan, sent that. Elizabeth Edwards. Hi, guys. My vote the motor home and car on show. I think, I think John's keeping a record of this. Martin Sills thought that was it, guys. 
Yeah, well, it was. The motor room shows no more. Ivan Sackwell, sorry I disagree. We went for a brand new water trail, MRL 730, 2017 for first five. I agree with you, Ivan. At the end of the day, I was appealing to people who want to start having the first camper van, um, and it's down to pounds and pennies. Just a good little start. That's not going to break the bank. Phil and Taz Green, we brought our very first motor home last year. Never done it before. Wife crashed in her, cashed in her NHS pension. It's been the best thing we have done. Took us six months of going into hundreds of motor homes. Sounds like you did your own work and uh, judging by that picture, nice motor home. It's a Bailey. We had this conversation last week, Shane. We did do, yeah. Available today. Well said, Jason. Travelling seats only. Phil and Taz Green ended up with a Bailey autograph. It's the best thing we've done. Great fans, Shane. We love that, didn't we? Yeah. Just, so, the, so the Baileys, they used to, was it the silver? Yeah, they used to have the silver cab on the autographs, didn't they? Or they used to be a, an approach SE, which was what they turned into. And then they went to a black cab, which looked spot on, but very sporty. And then they went to plain white, didn't they? Yeah. I think the reason probably why they went to plain white was a little bit to go along the auto trail route and then sell you different colours, which they haven't got to yet. Yeah, but they never did that for two years, did they? So so 17 and 18 models of the Baileys, they went back to white for, or went to white for some strange reason. I, and I think they made a mistake there. I think they ended up turning around and saying, oh, actually, that doesn't, that doesn't sell and look very good. So now they've gone to that really nice... Black cab with silver sides, which you, which you can just make out. Which is definitely, mate, because that black cab there on Phil and Taz Green's uh, picture, right, soon you see it, that's a Bailey. Yeah. That's a Bailey. So, right, new part of the show. Uh, I agree about the seatbelts, Greg. Uh, new part of the show, we're going to talk about caravans and motor ropes trade-wise and give you a little bit of insight, so we'll bring Mark on from the caravan place. All right. You all right? Is it all working okay? No. Yeah, well, I was up until a minute ago. My internet just crashed and I disappeared. And I thought, uh oh, this about sums my week up. Right. <laughs> How's your week been then? Terrible. It's been good, but it's been terrible. Well, tell us, you've got to share stuck. it. Pull your heart out. I just, just can't get stuck. I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever been out on a weekend looking at stock. And yesterday I was out from. Half past ten and didn't get back in till eight o'clock. Uh, didn't buy anything. <laughs> didn't buy a sausage. Nothing. Yeah. And then today, um, I actually managed to buy one today, but it wasn't wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Uh, and that's the problem. A lot of the stuff that's out there at the minute, it's just not good quality, and it's pointless buying rubbish it's just just to have rubbish sat around it's it's not what we want to do so shame shame watch this mark I yeah kind of had come and part exchange yesterday i i i've heard about this yeah you, you you don't sell caravans though jason no even though we call caravans and campers <laughs> <laughs> um, so just caravans Campers, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But yeah. it doesn't matter what I'm called, Shade. At the end of the day, the viewers are voting for the boat for having caravan, <laughs> so let the viewers vote. So, yeah, I've got a caravan, um, Mark. I, I, I've, I've just bought a load to be honest. So, the demand on caravans has gone really, really bad. Don't worry about it if you don't want to buy it. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, all. I always try and look after you, Jason. Do you want it? Of course I do. <laughs> I wish you wanted. <laughs> this, what is he doing with it? <laughs> oh, you got to pay gonna... for this. <laughs> oh, but but I've 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 got a little lunar. I've got a deal going on a little lunar. <laughs> That'd be a good so, deal, isn't it? Swings and yeah, roundabouts. Jason, just what I'll do if I, if I was you, Jason, for every week that you leave it. The more desperate you get, and you can just put the prices up. I wouldn't do that. I might as well just <laughs> straight away with it, Tanta. I'll come to pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be knocking on your door at nine o'clock. <laughs> uh, what are you talk about this week, mate? Um, so we, we were on about last week about partexing, uh, yeah. and we'd sort of said, get 
trying to get the best value for your partex but somebody also put in the comments why why should we partex why shouldn't we sell it privately um so why why partex and i'm not saying that you should partex but i'm just trying to give you reasons that to sell it to a dealer or part exit um, but again a lot of people are selling privately at the minute um, so it's just going through if you're going to part exit what you can do to get the best value uh, and then also five reasons to part exit rather than selling it privately um, so obviously if you want to put it in part exchange you obviously need to know what you've got first of all uh, know what make model what age it is you're going to get a good price then because you've got the correct information. Uh, when you actually take it into the dealers, then you want to make sure that it's nice, clean and tidy. Uh, obviously, if you turn up and it's green and there's mould everywhere, we're just going to look at it and go, oh, I can't see the wood for the trees here. We're going to have to spend a lot on this to get it right. So Andy just Tappen's make sure it's... Mark. Andy Tappen's. It does, yeah. Yeah, people just drag it out to storage and they think, oh, I'm Partex and I'm not bothered. It's full of dog airs and we walk in and then it's... Oh, well, we're going to spend two days on this now cleaning it. Uh, it might not do, but first impressions is a big, a big thing. So if you can turn up, if it's clean and tidy, you're not, it's one less thing for the dealer to stand there and say, oh, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, because ultimately you want to get the best value. Um, so again, that sort of rides into then five reasons to actually part exchange rather than trying to sell it privately. Um, you've, you've, Although you're not going to go over the top, it needs to be clean and tidy. But if you're going to sell it privately, you want to make sure that it's highly polished. It's really, really clean and tidy. It's absolutely immaculate because obviously you've got advertising costs. Um, so if you're spending money to, to advertise it, you want to make sure that you're going to get the best value and it's in the best state. Otherwise, people are just going to come along and knock it basically they're going to be looking at it exactly the same as if you go and it's really really bad a lot of dealers will see through a little bit of dirt and grime but a lot of public people they'll walk in and they'll just go oh no I, I don't want this so again that that you'll in that instance you will get a little bit more for it possibly part exchanging than selling it privately because a dealer will see through some of it um and the, the other problem is you've you've got advertising costs if you sell it privately if it's at your home you don't know who's coming around to your house there's there's a lot of unscrupulous people that will go out there and they'll they'll literally come around to see what security devices that you've got on there um see who's around see when you're there obviously one one part of the phone call if you're selling it privately is when can i come and have a look at it and the first thing that you do is you tell them when you're not there um so Good point, it, nice. it, it's, it's it's true um you so oh, i'm i'm gonna be away for three days so i can't i can't have a viewing on you've just told the person that is looking to it might be a genuine person it might be somebody that's thinking about stealing it and again likewise if somebody comes to have a look at it you've just shown them all around the caravan all security devices that you've got on there and then if they say oh can i come back in on, a, on monday tuesday and you're again going to stand there and say oh well i'm not in at this time i'm not in at that time uh oh my wife, my wife might be back at that time so you, you've you've got to sort of think about that side of it as well and i think uh over lockdown the police actually issued a statement saying just to be very very careful with caravans and motorhomes uh where you're advertising it what you're saying to people um so putting it in part exchange you've not got any of that worry um Number two, private buyers are always going to try and get you down on price. So you'll you'll advertise it at five thousand, and they'll always come along and they'll be making things up. Or oh, my my brother Harry's got a caravan. He's told me to look out for this and this little bit of a squeak here that could be a major problem. And whereas you take it into a dealer, a dealer's only ever going to tell you the truth. Um, we're going to look at is is the damp. And that's our big, big thing. And then is it just generally in a in a saleable condi condition? We're not going to go through and make every little tiny thing up trying to hammer you down on price. Um, so, again, another four for, for part exchanging. Um, the other thing is a lot of people think that if you sell it privately, that's it, no comebacks. Uh, and that's not necessarily true. We've, we've seen a couple of cases where people have sold caravans or motorhomes privately 
the buyer has gone and found an issue and they've gone back knocking on the door and sort of demanding money back so um again if if you think that there might be issues and you think oh well i'll sell it privately and i won't tell them always be always be honest always be upfront because if you if if you can put hand on heart if you've sold it privately and you can say i've told them about absolutely everything problem is there might be something there that you don't know so if they take it into have it service the service engineer could pick it up and again if if it was me and a lot of people that buy a van privately the first thing that you do is go and have it serviced um so that's when issues then could come up um we've we've had customers pre uh, previously private and they've they've actually ended up going through small claims court because there was there was issues um so again it just you sell it to a dealer you're never going to see it again uh, the dealer is is clued up uh, they know what they're looking for even if we get something wrong we're not going to ring you up and sort of say to you oh i've just been through your caravan and i've, I've found this i found that and sorry the deal's done you've you've uh, agreed the price i've brought it in um so you you just get rid of all of that um and again especially at the minute dealers are offering very very good prices um so if there's something silly we're, we're probably going to overlook it and go you know what i'd rather have the part exchange in than than moan and try and knock you on this um so again i, I think it's there's never been a better better time to to part x because dealers are after stuff um and we're going to overlook certain things if there's major damp then obviously it's a different story um but yeah we're des desperate for stock uh, or actually we're not with loads of caravans coming in so that one that you've got jason just... <laughs> so, so can i just summarize this don't sell your motor own privately mark wants you to sell it to him yeah basically <laughs> that's it no it's 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 obviously there's people out there that are going to want to sell it privately um but if if you're looking to buy a caravan or a motor own from a dealer um if you're sort of going in and go oh i really like that that caravan or motor home but i want to sell mine privately the chances are at the minute that when you go back that that will be gone um so it's it's a good time um the very last one was storage a lot of people store their caravans and motorhomes a lot of the reasons that you store it is that you've not got room on the drive so if you're selling it privately um the storage site might actually turn around and say, we won't let other people on. We don't want you to do trade from our premises. You've got to take the vehicle off the storage site. Um, obviously, if you can't get it at home, you've got an issue of where where do you take that then? So, uh, and again, because we... we it's something you do forget nice. a lot about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do storage and we've had one big sign is that do not bring other people on this site because you don't know who they are. Uh, again, it's exactly the same as if if you're letting people go to your house and you're telling them all the information, you're bringing them into our storage yard and again telling them all the information. They don't know what they're doing when they're in the storage yard. We don't know what they're doing in the storage yard. So we we own as a business owner, we only want people that are actually storing the caravan or motor home in our yard. We don't want other people coming in and buying everything up basically. So that's that's something that if if you do store it, that's something just to double check on because you could get yourself into trouble. That's a good shout out actually for a reason why you should part exchange actually. Um, yeah, there's good reasons there, and especially I would want to be spending twenty thirty thousand on a motor home and going and buying it privately. Would you say? No, not at all. Uh, the, the, buying it privately and going through the brokers that do do it. <laughs> um it just there's no guarantee you might be spent you might be saving a little bit but my god the chances are what do you say percentage of damp vans are guys that you buy probably 40 percent yeah so if, if we're finding the 40 percent who's getting the feedback i might just have to kick you out for a second mark yeah yeah mark. it's mark Mark. Yeah, I pro I probably I probably say that forty percent of of motor homes or caravans are probably damp. Now, if that's what we're finding, then you probably that's it's got to be across the board. 
and you're spending a lot of money on stuff. Yeah. Can't be oh, bringing back Connors, you better. Is that any better? Not really, Dad. That's yeah. better. I've had nothing but nothing but technical issues tonight. You were good last week. Right, so yeah. what are you talking well, about? Well, next well, week? What, have you, what have you just put on the floor? Uh, it was the nothing, nothing suspicious or anything like that, just the earphone things. Oh, okay. no, that's right. I thought that might be uh, Yeah, no, I thought that might have been uh, interfering. I wasn't doing anything dodgy. <laughs> What are you talking about next week? Um, so I might lead into caravan storage because, again, that's a big thing um, with people if they're buying. They might not be able to keep it on the drive or whatever. So we'll, we'll go a little bit on the storage side if that's okay with you. Okay. And then on the Motorhome and Caravan Show tonight, we're going to do a caravan review, are we? Yes, yes we are. we are. Yeah. Right. Can we bring in John to give the punter's view? Oh, hello. Hi, John. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to bring me in then. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, I was say, John, John, we're bringing you in. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <You're> ready. <laughs> right. What kind of one have you got for us? Um, so our very, very first one is a brand new 2020 Bessie Car Cameo 835. Uh, you won't see many of these about. Uh, there's only a couple of dealers in the UK that do them. Uh, Bessicar, if you don't know, is a is part of the Swift group. Um, they are based on a Swift Elegance, but they it's it's a brand of its own. Bessicar is a is a literally. If you speak to any caravan that's caravan for forty years, they will turn around to you and say Bessicar, yeah, one of the best vans out there, and and they are still very very good. Um, there's just lots and lots of little additions um that you don't you don't find in normal caravans there's not many other vans on the market that that will compare to a bessie car uh, this particular one is just under forty thousand pounds so you you are paying for for it basically um even though it's uh it's top top of the line it's very expensive um so it's Have a look inside. it's questionable uh, have, you, have you got the layout? Yeah, this this has got the, the fixed bed at the back. This is probably I picked this one because this is probably my favourite layout. My wife doesn't like it quite as much, uh, but I I really really like this layout with having the centre washroom. Mm -hmm. So if you do use it as four berth and you've got people at the front, you've got your children at the front, or you've got friends stopping with you at the front, your centre washroom, everyone can use that toilet, and you're not walking through a bedroom and past. So it's it's a lot more of a it's a, t a great two berth, but if you want to take fr friends or family away with you, uh, if you've not got children, it's it just gives you that option where you're not walking past other people of a, of a night to get to the toilet. That's um, a great bedroom. Mm. It's I do like absolutely that. fantastic. I I like something I'm add, something, yeah, something I'm going to add about that side-facing bed. If you pull that van up to a nice uh, view on the near side... Pop your bed up, sit up in bed, and then you've, you know, just imagine just facing over a cliff or something like that. Yeah, ah, absolutely no, 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 stunning. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. You need to put the bed the other way round. Oh, yeah, you you'll fall out when you get out the door. No, no, because you'll have an awning. <laughs> More than likely, you'll have an awning. Yeah, up, the awning. Mm. So the bed needs to go the opposite yeah. way. Ah. So. This, this is 26 foot long. So the chances of, I suppose, if it's if it's seasonal pitch, you might have a full awning. But if and it's eight foot wide, also I forgot to to mention. Um, so it, it really gives you the extra width around the bed. But a lot of people, if you're going to tour around with that, you'd probably used to use a, a four meter air awning, and you could probably leave that uh, bedroom window then free. Um, if you're going to seasonally sight it, you probably would want to go with a full full awning, which yeah, you would lose that then. So, that's uh, that a lot is the of only... day for a motor uh, for the caravan. Caravan, very, very expensive. Yeah. Ooh, um, ooh, but, but ooh. Yeah. This, Show me this, more. this is you you could you could go out and you could buy a BMW and Audi, or you could go out and you could buy a Rolls Royce. And this is this is literally the Rolls Royce. Um and I think they they don't build that many. And they don't sell that many, but it's for that person that goes. You know what? 
I want the best. I want pictures? the... There should be just, one of the bathrooms going back towards the bathroom. I love those overhead lockers. I do. They're mm. stunning. I haven't absolutely seen stunning. anything like that before. They're like airplane lockers, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And the going oh, wow. back to about 2014 has has those lockers also. They they started doing those in about 2014 onwards. So it's not it's not a brand new design. They've they've done that for a while. Is that a um, one in the fan walk? Eight foot wide, yeah. Right, yeah. I was going to say you can see you can see those extra inches coming into play there, can't you? Yeah, more yeah. on the right hand side where the TV is, uh, John. Mm. Yeah. yeah would, the kitchen I doesn't look definitely... massive, does it? No. Yeah, for the size of the van, there is a little the little white unit that's down on the left hand side. Um, it's like a flip up. Or the left hand bench seat. Yeah, mm. that flips up for a little bit of extra, but it's not mm. huge. Um, but again, it. How many people cook in the vans now? How much room do you need? True. Yeah, well, we to be mm. fair, we, we do cook a fair bit in the van still. Um, do you? Yeah. You wanted a 40 gram one, John? No. <laughs> <laughs> when, we get you? Them fat, that shit there, when Sarah's doing the sausages and bacon, it's like, that is not being cooked in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Got a picture of the back end, Dave? Mark? There's not no. That's that's the only pictures I can oh. get my hands on. To be fair, um, yeah. There's the, not I'd not one of the, the back end. The back end as well. Yeah, they uh, they've got they've got the six four five, um, which was the opposite way round, um, but they hadn't got that bed at the back, unfortunately. And again, because it is a brand new one, it's just literally been able to get off uh, brochure pictures. Uh, but the the bed is absolutely phenomenal. It's it's definitely a van I'd say that if you were going to sight it, I don't think I'd want to be towing that round all the time. Um, I don't. I we tow a lot, and I don't like towing eight foot wide vans. What's the weight? Um, just under two ton. So, so you're uh, going to need a big car as well, aren't you? It's not only a tank. Yeah, you have to use a commercial, aren't you, for that? Uh, no, you could get discoveries, um, mm. big okay. four befores. So uh, yeah, you've not going to go into uh, into the um, commercial Hobbies side of it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. The other the other little extras that you get if you spend your forty thousand uh, pounds, you get a free <laughs> a free front towing cover. Obviously, it comes with alarm. Uh, it comes with a standard. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with the standard Swift command, which is all app based. Um, it's got the Aldi constant hot water system as well, so you're never going to run out of hot water for your showers. But, so what's Swift Command for the people who don't know? Um, so the Swift Command is the Swift like panel panel above the door, which you control everything from. Um, so all of your water, your heating, you can control it all through the, the Swift Command system, and there's an app. So the Swift app, then you download the app, register with Swift for that. You can then control... So if you're out down the pub and you go, oh, it's got a little bit cold, I'll just pop my heating on. Um, so you can control all that, put your awning lights on, put your internal lights on. So you've got app, app control, basically. Um, so it's it's really bringing it into the 21st century um, and making a, a Can a I just more... a couple of comments there? Andy Wass, um, Shane. And... There's one. Yeah, isn't it just bad engineering? Bad engineering comes down the same line as Swift, surely. Yeah, it is. It's a Swift elegance with with the better car branding, but you are getting differences. You you won't get that sort of upholstery and whatever you in the elegances. Uh, the you won't get front towing cover. Um, you'll get the Swift command. You. I don't believe the elegances have the because this comes with the Truma gas changeover system. Uh, you've got a bathroom shaver socket built in. All of the oh. all of your <laughs> roof lights, <laughs> all of your I roof don't lights say for 40 are automatic. Grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of your roof lights are automatic. So you press a button, they'll go up to halfway or full way. They've got rain sensors on there, so if it starts raining, they'll automatically close down, even if you're out. Wow. Uh, so you you are getting value for money if you convince yourself. I think, to be honest, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of extras there you can get wooed into. 
Um, yeah. Jeff Foster's yeah. just banged a point up well there. All that room and still microwave his eye up. I don't think yeah. there's any other totally points agree. to be honest. Even in one of my videos I did in, in our Bailey, the microwave's up high, and it's an accident waiting to happen for our kids. I mean, Tristan, he's 11 years old, he'll make his own breakfast, but he's putting milk in there, and um, it, it worries me. Can you just leave yeah. Gally Squires to when Lee comes on, mate? So that's um, Gally Squires comment. Can you do that when Lee comes on, please? Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the other thing with the microwaves as well, they're still not putting enough ventilation around the microwave. So if you try and cook a jacket potato in your microwave, it's still going to go bang. Even spending 40 grand, the microwave is going to go pop and not yeah. for the right reasons. It's um, a nice fad. Mm. It's it's a absolutely it's it, it is that sort of thing. <sighs> right, here's my issue. Right, that's a nice, nice fan, and I think all three of you agree with me. Forty k is a lot of dough on a caravan. Now, this is where you get into the realms of if you're buying that type of caravan and you've just said it yourself, it's something you wouldn't go towing with. You'd sight it. Yeah. Now you're starting to get on the realms of do I get a static at the campsite or ah. do I get just, okay. but, however if, you can't if you move go, it each year. Exactly. If you go onto that static site and you've just spent your forty grand and you go, Oh, you know what? I don't like it here. Come on, get it on the back of the car, we're gone. You can't do that with a static. Okay. And that's I like that, it. I mean, and again, but, it's a study yeah. van. I, I, yeah. 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 John, what's your yeah. thoughts of it? It's nice. It's a really good looking van. Um, it's a lot of dollar. Um, and it, it, it sort of begs the question is if you're starting to pay that kind of money for a caravan, then you're into motorhome money as well. Why could you not be looking at a motorhome? Um, because not only you've got to have to have this, this big expensive caravan, you're going to have to have a big expensive car to tow it. Well, for that kind I of think combined money. I think that's where it comes into its own on the site then, because you can go stick mm -hmm. it on the site. I can have my little one litre polo and I've, I've cut my towing costs down. Um, and I think that's why it really, I really don't think you'd want to tow that around. I think that is a, a van that you'd want to size. It could, uh, hit another market, you, but it could hit another market with like the race guys. Yeah. Yeah, Best but again, you would you, would would you really want to be towing that round? I suppose how good you are at racing. Well, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've covered a caravan now, matey, and um, we'll see you next week. We've got this one. I oh, know we've got another one. <laughs> we are going to with time, you know. We are getting a bit of feedback on the got camera. Far away with this one. Do you want to? It's a quick one. I'll <laughs> I'll go very very quick. This is this is um completely opposite end of the uh, spectrum so this is a little sprite major four it's a it's badged up as a celebration um eighteen thousand pound for a brand new one um still four berth fixed bed if no. uh, pop the layout on um, so it's still four berth fixed bed now it's half the price it's not half the size um and again, it's it's part of the Sprite brand, so it's it's only thirteen hundred kilograms, absolute maximum weight. So anybody with uh, who passed the test after ninety seven will be able to tow, or should be able to tow this, depending on what car that they've got. Um, there's more of a chance of them being under that three and a half ton if they pass the test after ninety seven with this. Um, just an interesting point: we've just sold this particular van. Um, it was two years old. It was about eighteen, nineteen thousand 19,000 when it was brand new, and we've just sold it for 15 and a half. Um, now, I don't know. Can I just stop you there, Mark? Just two seconds. Shane. Yeah. You see the inside of that van there? Just yes. put the inside on of the other one. <laughs> the, other, the other kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Same, it is. But that's yeah. where, that's <laughs> where your 20 grand goes. <laughs> yeah. But now, look at that now, John. If you had yeah. the extra 20 grand, where would you go? Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
So not everybody has of 40 fish. grand to spend on a not everybody has 40 grand to spend on a, a car or a yeah. motorhome. So John, John, I totally agree with them. But we've just looked at that Bessie car and he's just put the picture up of that in your life. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a nice van. Yeah, but this was the same as when we went and bought our caravan. We had five grand in the bank and it was like, right, we're buying a five grand caravan and walked away with a brand new one. How does that work? <laughs> well, the best you for you. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It is. You, yeah. you go in and you're like, wow, it's, it's, this is another um, totally different level. That's nice, isn't it? It is nice. <laughs> the, the croissants come with it as well. <laughs> I'm sure they took him in. I bet they will. <laughs> Forty grand, <laughs> exactly. But again, that that better car after twelve months, you you're gonna lose ten grand at least on that. I'd mm. have thought. Right. Um, you you could you could go and buy that little Sprite Major again for that. Mm. It's, it's so it's but again it. If that's what you want, then that's what you want at the end of the day, isn't it? People go and buy Rolls Royces, Bentleys, and that's that's just the realms that you get into, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Pays your money, you I take think, your choice. Yeah, yeah. I think I think for me, I've always said sprites are fantastic value for money. Um, you're going to sleep the same in the bed. You're not going to do anything differently when you're on holiday. Mm. So well, that, that's, well, that's, that's in fairness. That's two good bands. If you do something like that next week... Um, again, see what, okay, see what you're getting for the value of the money. Um, lads, we've got open mic next week, no rules, no agenda. I like open mic. <laughs> Did you enjoy it last time? Yeah, it was a riot. Absolutely it was your riot. first time. I wanted it. was my first time on, and uh, we had uh, extreme motor home adventure on and rolling with the Robsons, and it was brilliant. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to next week. Yeah, yeah, no rules, no agenda, no subjects. The people decide the subjects. The way you can get on is dead simple. You can get me on Twitter. It's Captain <laughs> Caravans at SY45RP. Uh, just follow me. I'll follow you back and send me a DM on Instagram at the Motor Man. Same again. Just follow me and um, send me a DM. Um, it'd be nice if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, the Motor Man. Shoot. Or mine at We Buy a Motor Caravan. Please. So we have the facility to get you straight on. We'll send you an email with a link on, and you can get straight on. How easy was it to get on, John? You tell us. Cake. It's so, so easy. Like I say, you sent me a message and said, you, do you want to be on the show? I was like, yep, definitely. And next thing, get an email, and boom, you're there. Simple as that. Open mic next week. Um, see you next week, Mark. See you in a bit, John. See you later. See you, Mark. Bye. Oh, still there. I thought you were. I thought Hello. I was going. <laughs> that was. <laughs> ah. I missed him last week, you know. Hey, Mark. Hey, you what? What's on? Hey, hey. Still. I missed me book here. Not you. Hey. Get him on. Oh. <laughs> You're right, mate. How are you? I missed you last week. It's understandable. <laughs> How was your week away, mate? Brilliant. Loved it. Yeah, ready for another. Yeah. So what do you think of the new Luke the Motor Urban Caravan show? Um, yeah, I think Caravan and Motor Home show. Last service you do for me. <laughs> all right. You won't see me tomorrow then. <laughs> oh, say hey up, mate. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it was heading down the street, mate, wasn't it, where we were getting more and more caravanners coming on, wasn't it? Because like yeah. I said, you've been here from the yeah. start. Um, and it's not easy, is it, every week? In your own time. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> now, well, I've been sat here for I was waiting for you. I'll have you on a quote too, he says. Yeah, but I didn't realise really? what would do that, did I? Yeah. So, was there Don't a few mind. comments? Um, I think um, Lee could answer. Yes, it probably was. I um, think you mentioned as well to me, mate, in private chat that you've actually um, got a customer with the best car, haven't you? I've, I have got a customer with the best car. It's not that model, but I have got a customer with the best car. They're a lovely van, really nice build quality. Is it they better are, than the pictures? Uh, yeah. 
I've got a lot of customers with Elegance Continentals, you know, the top end Swifts. Um, and that one, yeah, it's, I say it's a net step up, right? But they still do. And it's just my little bugbear that surrounds on the sockets, them little fake chrome plastic surrounds that I think just spoil it. That I think they just look a bit tacky. Just personally. just before we go on to that question there, what, what do you think of this? To be fair, like, it will be wood less construction, so has less issues of yeah. water ingress if it happens. Not too bad for yeah. 40k. The standard models are 35. People often miss the money goes on construction rolling exactly, with the rocks. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that model will be the same as the top end Swift. There'll be a completely timberless construction. Um it doesn't mean it won't get ingress issues. You still get ingress issues on um that build but you're not going to have the um damage caused you know where the wall boards and stuff are getting damaged and stuff like that so but yeah they it is they're a good van why do caravans have vents in the awning gary squire no i saw that question and i'm assuming he's talking of the fridge vents um i thought that not, as well mate they're not all on the awning side. It all depends on the layout. You could have a van one year will have the, the fridge on the left-hand side of the van. Next year, they might put it on the right-hand side of the van. It all depends. Um, it's only an issue if you use the, the van on gas um, and making sure that the fridge works properly, which is a perfectly good excuse for making sure your van's regularly serviced, maintained, and, and everything's working as it should. So yeah, if you do use a van on gas and you've got your vents in the awning, it's it's a good reason to have it regularly checked. What about the other one as well, mate? Why we're on vents? We have vents in the floor and we have some vents in the wall. Why do we never cover yeah. them up, mate? <laughs> right, the van the van itself is a sealed unit basically. Okay, you've got your windows, your doors. Because of the gas um, systems within the van. And because it's a sealed unit, you've got to have, and you know, it's a living accommodation, you've got to have ventilation within it. And based on the appliances, etc., you've got to have a certain amount of ventilation. If you remember, someone came to us when I was doing a job for you a couple of years ago and said they got a leaking roof light and would I just take it off and board over the top of it and seal it so that, you know, it couldn't be used. And I said, no, it's it's part of your ventilation for the van. You know, the trouble I could get into for some, doing something like that is, is ridiculous. And... I regularly see people who complain, oh, I get a draft from that one, so I've covered it up with tape. And I'll go and do the service, I take it all off. Um, and I mark it all on the paperwork as well, because I have to cover my back. You know, so if if I go away and they cover it back up and then something happens and they'll, you know, God forbid someone died, they're going to say, well, why haven't, you know, done that? But at least if I've covered my back on the paperwork, I know I'm right. You shouldn't be covering your vents up on the floor, either. Not you know, at all. Like, no, be. no, definitely not. They're there for a reason, people. Do put your, don't put your pots and pans on the over the vents under the ovens. They're there for the reason. If you have a gas leak, gas is heavier than air, LPG, I should say, and it falls down. The vents are there for the gas to escape probably, aren't they? Mate? Yeah, definitely. But uh, when you do do your gas course, uh, ain't it, uh, Lee, we have a, a thing that you have to work out how much ventilation you can use for a certain area. Yeah, yeah. Once you once you do your all your training, you will know that you know if it's again, it's it's something that I come across regularly on van conversions. You know, people say, "Oh, can you come put me a gas certificate on this van?" And the first thing you'll do is you'll open it up. The the bottle's just literally stuck in a cupboard with yeah. a strap around it and yeah. there's no dropout vents and you just straight away say sorry mate this is no good it doesn't comply yeah. um you know that's it yeah there's no ledge at the bottom is this to create a well no no it, sh it should be yeah, anyone doing a van conversion the van should the the gas bottle should sit within a metal lined cupboard and the lip should be 50 mil and it has to have a gas dropout vent as well yeah or some sort of ventilation. There's no thought sometimes putting these camper vans, mate. It worries me. Some of them are... Stuff of that's knocking around, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And and I'll tell you what, this last week, I mean, honest to God, 
it has been the most stressful week ever because oh, God. now all the sites have opened. Everyone wants to get out. And it has literally been a case of I've had to leave the phone in the van because Wait, I just can't are you keep having the, the problem thoughts. I've had a few weeks ago where when I said to you I'm checking vans off and they've been sat there for three months on so coming up with loads of problems. Now that people are getting in the vans, are you getting this now? Yeah, yeah. Everyone is literally ready to go away over the next week or two. The vans have been sat for some of them been sat for nearly twelve months and they are having problems and the phone just I just can't keep up with it. It is literally I've spent all morning this morning doing callbacks um to try and catch up with what I've missed in the week. It's it's absolute chaos at the minute. And there is some real rubbish being pulled out at the minute. Because of what's going on. There's there's vans being pulled off fields that you wouldn't keep chickens in, and people are selling them for stupid money. And they are just riddled with problems, and people people are being ripped off left, right, and centre at the minute. They really are. You know, this going back to to what Mark was saying previously um, regarding tradings and things like that. There's a thing that you can do when you buy a caravan or motorhome. Um, a lot of mobile engineers do it is a pre-purchase inspection. Uh, the Caravan Club actually offer a three-tier um, pre-purchase inspection. Just, which can I just, to... quick, just quickly stop you. So what you're saying to me is, right, people have just been going by buying caravans and then they're coming to you and go, could you check the caravan off after they brought yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Right, sorry. Yeah, they've been out and spent money yeah. and now they've got it home. And I mean, I've got, I've had three or four calls over the last couple of days that have bought caravans. Um, they've been told it's been checked off, but just to be sure they want a service doing anyway. And can you do it next week? Because we're going away. And I'm like, no, September maybe, you know, but it's, there's just so much of it at the minute. Um, yeah, rolling with Robson's there. Um, I always recommend that get a caravan engineer to do a report. I always recommend to get a caravan report, check private, be good so far. Yeah, absolutely. There's when I first started, it was a nice little thing to do to go out and do a pre purchase inspection for someone. Um, and you'll literally go around depending on what they want checking, you know. you Damp checks, the big one, um, gas safety and roadworthiness. Now, unless you're doing a full service, there's only a certain amount of, of roadworthiness you can check. But like I said, the Caravan Club offer this three tier um, pre purchase inspection scheme. And a lot of caravan engineers, mobile guys like myself, do their own different ones as well. Um, at the minute, it's, it's not something I could do at the minute. I'm just too busy for it. Um, save this big money isn't it yeah I've I've been to vans and previously and they've been told yeah it's great we had it serviced last year no problem with it I've gone into it and within five minutes found damp and a bloke's argued with me on the drive there's no damp in that van I said I'll show you mate you know yeah. it's there um, and, he, and one guy actually said to me well you don't have to tell them <laughs> well yeah that's why they're paying me to come and do this you know, so there are rogues out there that will try and sell you anything. And, and the nine times out of 10, when you say to someone, listen, I really like that van. I really want the, you know, the van itself. I like the layout. It's perfect for what we want. I want an engineer to come and check it. 90% of the time, they'll tell you something's wrong. Well, we have had a problem with this in the past. We have had a problem with that. Or... Yeah. They will try, love, try and avoid you getting someone to come and check it because they'll know full well that you'll find an issue with it, um, which, you know, it's, an, it's another common one. Let's just put that into perspective there, firstly. You're going out and looking at a caravan for a customer, right? Let's face it, you're going to find something wrong with it. But your reporter's goal is going to become, come back in reflection to what that person is buying, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, Drop absolutely. It, just yeah. so people yeah, know, yeah. Right? yeah, it's going to be yeah, it's going to yeah. This caravan's five grand. This one's doing. This one's doing. But yes, it's a good buy. Blah blah blah. Because this is all that wants yeah. to. 
I mean, what I've normally done in the past is if if there are issues with it, I can say, look, you know, it needs this doing, it needs that doing. That's going to cost you such and such amount of money. That's going to cost you this amount of money. And then it gives them something to sort of go back with and say, look, yeah, OK, we found these issues and this is what it's going to cost. You know, let's sort something out. And then they've got the choice then if they want to. Majority of the time, once you find damp, people walk away. They say, I'm not interested. I'm not getting involved with a damp van. Um, but it's a good, make sure you like that van and that is the van you want prior to, to calling someone. Because, I mean, these can cost you anything up from, I think the top caravan club one is about 210 quid, which is pretty much a full service. Yeah. yeah. Um, so make sure that's the van you want prior to saying right okay i'm going to get someone to check it spend 200 quid on it and then say actually do you know what i'm not that keen on that layout because you, you know you've got to be sure that's the one you want first and there's, there's something i'm just going to jump in there with this lee as well i've seen so many private ads on the motorhomes recently and the price is up there and sometimes above what you can buy them off a of forecourt for with a warranty and i'm like I can see the damp on the photos. I can see the staining on the walls. And some poor sod is going to go into there that does have no idea about what's happening and he's going to buy that. And the same applies for me with a lot of the uh, the brokerage. Yeah. Um, you think because it's a dealer that they're just going to get an absolute perfect van. No, they're just selling it for somebody and that's it. Yeah. yeah you've got to yeah. be very careful with brokerage. Yeah. That's how I got my motor in. Yeah, but you, the, you know, I know it sounds daft, but you know what you're talking about with it. I well, think. the broker, the brokers actually sent someone to have a look at it, and then wanted a service. I went and serviced the van, found a couple of little issues, um, and he was going to put right. And there was a tiny little patch of damp, which I told him how much it cost to fix. The guy rang me, made the guy an absolutely ridiculous offer, and the brokers then were pushing him to put it back on, um, and and get it back on. And I got it in for repair. And I said, look, once it's finished with the brokers, let me know. And I'll, you know, give you this for it. And yeah, that's how we did the deal on it. Because I knew it was a good van. Just to quickly make, because time's running away from us. You went to a few storage places today. Uh, a bit upset by this, actually. Um, Friday, yes. Yeah, I received, I received one call um, whilst I was away on holiday. Um, I think the Friday or the Saturday um, from a woman who owns a site that I go to quite regularly. Um, really distraughtly, we've had a van broken into um, and they've stolen a Truma Combi. They've literally okay. broken into the van, lifted the seats up, took the Combi out. Not only, not just took it out, they've chopped it out. They've cut all the cables, they've cut all the, you know, hacked it out basically and um you know they need a repair they need a new window i said okay look i'm on holiday as soon as i get back i'll i'll sort it all out for you um monday i got another call at least someone's been to pick the van up um the battery box was closed however when they've gone to open it to switch the mover on the battery's gone but they've not just taken the battery they've hacked the cables off so it's going to be rewired back through into the van and um, that was that was a second of three, um, literally that have just yeah. Whilst whilst they've been in lockdown and they know no one's going to use them, they've managed to find a way. And they they have no idea. This is a Casoa Gold site, and they've no idea where these have have got in, and and got them from, and really? and got away with the stuff. So when I mean it's been a bit more difficult during lockdown because a lot of. Uh, sites that haven't probably have anybody manning the site they just said shut down, nobody's allowed in and out full stop but me, my dad used to work at a company uh, that used to buy and sell motorhomes and they used to have a storage site on on there, and what they used to do is they used to pay for a pitch at £250, £300, whatever it was for a year back then and they used to drive in a piece of crap caravan that was probably worth 500 quid. And a lot of the time, what they used to do is they used to drive out with a brand new one. Yeah. But that because they actually had the access to it. That actually happened at a site that I go and do work for. It's a caravan, uh, camping and caravan club site. 
and someone pulled on there last year um, were members as far as they were aware uh, came in dropped the caravan off and said listen I've got to go home I've got an emergency at home but I'll be back later tonight um, can I still get back in and they said yeah no problem they went off and they they literally left an old four or five hundred quid van there and came back that night and hitched up a brand new van and towed it away yeah I'm just just gonna tag on a couple of uh, comments if you just want to read these out Jason the Beckwiths, I have been to a caravan dealers and been appalled at how much damp was in one of their bands. I walked away and never been back. Now, the re I wanted to bring that up because I don't want to to ignore that, if that makes sense, because I don't, I, I, it is true. There are people out there, private and dealers, that do do that, don't they? Yeah. They yeah. sell anything, unfortunately. Yeah. It's a, it's a fine line with damp. Um, you got to get damp in all the older vans, Lee, am I right? Pretty much, pretty yeah. much, yeah. I mean, it's you've got to remember it's a little box on wheels, bouncing around. It's, I mean, bouncing around on the road, and British roads are atrocious. A lot of the times, you get to a site and you're going to end up towing it possibly across a field. Um, the adhesives aren't that are used, you know, that they recommend after 10 years that they, you know they start to break down. So, once you've got a van over. 10 years old in effect you know basically those adhesives and sealants are starting to deteriorate to the point where you're going to get leaks so unfortunately so just, just on a quick in there then lee right if you've got a van five ten years old or whatever should you at least go around every so many years and reseal um no no it's a big job to reseal a van i mean you can overseal a van but that's in my opinion, it's a temporary bods job. Right. It, do, it doesn't do the job properly. It's if you've got a leak coming in and you need to stop it quickly, yeah, overseal it, you know. But at some point, that needs to be repaired properly. It's not. No, no I think fixed. the point I was trying to make was was you say the sealant should be last ten years. Yeah. So therefore, then everything that's been sealed should be resealed again after ten years. That's what I was trying to say right. to you. Yeah, I suppose it it comes down to life of of the the stuff used. You know, it's like you you have white goods in your house. You know, that you've got a three four year lifespan. You know, your, your van interior stuff, uh, appliances and things that will have a lifespan. You know, and same with the actual construction of the van. In time, that's going to break down. The lifespan of that has deteriorated. Um, and yeah, it will need repairs. Not that damp you can stick your fingers through the interior. I see many like that. Many like uh, that. It's, it's similar with us, really, when we go out and, you know, it's a van that somebody's only owned for six months and they bought it from a main dealer. And you tell them it's damp. And... Yeah. Do Unfortunately, you know, some dealers have decent, di different standards, don't they? Yeah, that, that that's the thing. And, do, and yeah. doing your own checks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have been asked to go to a dealer's to do a pre-purchase inspection. Um, and the, the dealers weren't keen on me going. Um, I went and I found a couple of issues. There was no damp issues, but I found a couple of issues. But they did, you know, do them a deal on them that they wouldn't have got had they have just took their word for it. Yeah. Do you know what? This is that there's probably a good topic we could talk about here in um, League One Week. Probably what damp? On, on damp, yeah. Oh yeah, you can talk forever on damp. <laughs> <laughs> so you often have to look for areas where they have lots of pinpricks in as they have kept testing it but never fixed it. It's not so that's much that. Go on. It's that's difficult difficult for that on newer vans. Because newer vans, by rights, are supposed to be tested with a pinless meter. Um, only if you find high readings would you start then using what we class as an invasive, yeah, protein meter survey master. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not many people take, carry you them. You don't actually need the pins, yeah. I do, I do no. because it's worth every penny for me because that's where. Yeah, that's it. You don't see many people carry them around because that's a 400 quid piece of kit. Yeah. Um, so. You know, you do a, a non-invasive test, we call it, 
and then if you find high readings then you'll do an invasive test now the thing with those is if you've got a metal wall plate in the wall it can give you a reading of what you would expect to be damp and then when you do an invasive test you'll realize that it's actually just a metal wall plate or something yeah. like that so yeah. to don't always look too much into pinpricks because it may be that someone's the done an there, invasive test probably the other reason why there is a few people have been to look at the van so a few of them have done exactly yeah and and the other thing is you know you i go to, to vans where people have gone themselves with their own damp meters and they've literally shoved those pins in all the way as far yeah. as they will go you know yeah. they're not testing the wallboard they're testing the insulation inside because they have <laughs> literally just shoved them straight through they tested the outside you know, there, Leo. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's amazing me when i see that mate i if someone come and did that to my van wanting to buy it then there'd be serious trouble because there's no need for that no not you know, I used to, we, yeah, I used if to someone comes to buy, buy my van with a damp meter, I'd say, okay, you can go around and test that by all means. Do you know how to use that properly? Yeah. You yeah. know, because when you start sticking a damp meter like that into the walls. Right. Uh, we're going to have to wrap this up. To, I glad to see you back, Lee, on the Motorhome yeah. and Caravan Show. Caravan and Motorhome Show. And uh, we'll see you next week. Um, see you next week, mate. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm next week. Okay. <laughs> see I'm next thanks, week. thanks, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. See you late. Come Bye. On. Come on. There's just um, um, just before well, you, you crack on, there's just a couple of questions that have just come through. If you just give me one second to find them. Uh, okay, one was from Paul Davies. Is 10k realistic budget for a first motor home? No. 50. Yeah, 15. 15. Honestly, 15 is a nicer budget is the best way to put it. At the moment, unfortunately, yeah. those 15 grand motorhomes are probably now 18. Yeah. That's the way that everything's point. gone that's on. That's a good point. Yeah, that is a good point. It's a bit difficult. Um, another one, Ian Cocklin, uh, is looking to come into motorhomes in the next couple of years. Uh, what do we think the market's going to be like? <laughs> I didn't. Some people didn't expect the market to be like it is like this. Probably six weeks ago. No, mate. You just can't. You just. You don't. It's week by week at the moment. Week by week. Um, it's like, but like with Lee, all of a sudden now he's getting it with everybody using theirs. You, you, we don't know, but we'll tell you about it each week on the Motor and Caravan Show. Yes, we will do on the Caravan and Motor Show. Right, we're miles behind schedule here. It's John's Jones reviewing the council. I don't know if I forget about John. <laughs> How can you forget about me? It's been a good <laughs> one tonight, boys. I've enjoyed tonight. It's, oh, yeah. it's I have, I'm looking at the clock and it's what one hour forty three minutes. But boy, right, it's it's been it's flowed really well. I've, I've, it's been yeah, it's been enjoyable because it's the old new Motor Home and Caravan show. To be fair, I have been counting up the comments, and um... <laughs> winner, winner, Shay, chicken dinner. Shane, I know we're on the same sort of page, and I think Lee is as well. Um, that the caravan and motorhome show name does flow very well. However, um, in the chat, um, we have had fourteen votes for the motorhome and caravan show. And only six, including Lee, for the Caravan and Motor Home Show. So we just had, a, we just had some more. Hold on. <laughs> That's you. Well, you can't count that. You can't count that. <laughs> what's, what's the, sorry, I missed that, John. I do apologise. What's the tally? Tally uh, for the Motor Home and Caravan Show is 14. For the Caravan and Motor Home Show, it is six, including Lee. So Lee voted for uh, the caravan. I, I like. I think it flows on. Uh, it flows well. The caravan and motorhome show flows off the tongue well. But the viewers are saying the motorhome and caravan show. That's two to one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Well, we've got Lee. Man? Lee. Lee's just. Lee's just uh, commented caravan and motorhome show. Yeah. So, you can't count that. Hey, hey. At the end of the day, regardless of what the show is called, you've got a great. Um, 
idea going where where we've got not only motorhomers we've got caravanners coming on board as well oh the, the, look the comments are flowing in oh no it's it's only shane <laughs> that's not me <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think regardless, uh, one or what you two are going to have to decide what you call it. But I think both of them work well, and I think that introduction of of letting letting us caravanners come in on your show is is great. Like you say, it's just adding it's to. It's not a case this. of letting caravanners come on, mate. It's just starting <laughs> to come on. Um, yeah, we just we just bombed your party. <laughs> we, uh... no, it's a case of appealing to everyone, isn't it? That, that, yeah, that's exactly. the thing. And, and at the end of the day, we talk about motor. And uh, do you know what? I enjoyed the uh, mock reviews on the calendar. It was something different that I don't look at. You mm. know what? The, the ones like on the best that, that on that better car, particularly with the automatic uh, roof lights and everything like that. I because I've been out of caravans for that long now. I never realised they had that in them. Mm. I never realised the technology had moved on so much. Could you, I just well, my mind doesn't have that. Them. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but I just I yeah. <laughs> But no, it was good. It was nice. It was nice to have a, a, a like a bit of a yin and yang. You've got something way up here, and then something that's well. This is more everybody's level. Yes, I think we all aspire to having the best of the best. We all want a Porsche sat on the drive. But hey, my Volvo will do. <laughs> it's I think it's that. But no, having a having a nose around a caravan and, and looking in something that's top spec like that, then yeah, and it's the same with the motorhomes. It's it, exactly that. It's. It's there's a, it's a different world, isn't there? That is affordable to some, and um, yeah, for for the people that it's not quite affordable to yet, then oh, I do like having a little nose around. It's good, yeah. <laughs> See, this sums everything up here. The Beckwiths Caravan and Motorhome Show is much like the Caravan and Motorhome Club. Yeah, yeah. If this is where you pair don't think about this, you see. Hey, it's all about all of us. Whatever we do, we're watching this, and we've got our motorhomes, we've got our caravans, we've got our camper vans, we've got our tents, and it's all about getting out. It's getting out and enjoying the great outdoors that is there. That we're not we. You know, it's hard to describe because if you do it, you know why we do it. <laughs> Shane, yeah. Jeff, Fostick, Cam's all Max. Well, Cam, Cam's or Max, Cam's or Max, Cam's or Max, uh, Cam's Is it not Cam's 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 away? Away? Away. <laughs> Right, we, we, we're running away here. Right, John, come on, George, George. Yes. Let's right. get what we're here for. We're so I was going to say, we are, right, it's 10 to 9 already. These people that are watching probably want to get off to Benny Boy Bozo soon. Yeah, to so. school night tonight as well. No, it is. It's not work tomorrow. So, um, John's Jones, this time last year, it was summer holiday time and things were a lot different last year um, for, for all of us. Um, but uh, we, we got away to uh, a caravan and motorhome club site called uh, Hillhead. Now, um, Shane, image one, do that. So um, just to give you an idea roughly where it is, um, there, it's um, um, near Paynton um, and... Uh, Talky way. Um, and, what's, it um, what's it called again? Sorry, John. It's Hillhead Caravan and Motorhome Club site. So we chose this one it's because a few it's sites there, though, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, and that's yeah. what I wanted the, to, to show. Is that the name you're rolls not restricted. off the tongue quite well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I know where you're going from that now. Shane, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <John. laughs> But yeah, th this was the area we wanted to go on holiday, and obviously we are, are, are we are caravan and motorhome club members, so we chose this site. Not only why for why I was just about to say the only reason I'm saying only, that, John. I only say that yeah. because if you look at some other ones, there's some there by the beach and everything. So yeah, we need. Why did Hillhead get get you well, out? <laughs> one for us because we are members of the caravan motorhome club site, so it's yeah. it's a, a little bit cheaper. But also they have a swimming pool. Um, so, um, for us, there was a couple of tick boxes that it was in the right area and something for the kids to do. Um, and, um, there was a, a bar and restaurant on site as well. There was a little arcade for the kids and it just ticked all the boxes for our family summer holiday. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the one we chose. Yes, there are others in the area, including, um, caravan and motorhome club sites. They're all within spitting distance of each other and uh, yeah that's that's why we chose hillhead 
Oh, there we go. Blake's on tour. Last November. It's, uh, it's good, isn't it? It's a lovely song. I shouldn't imagine the pool was open in November, um, but they've got, uh, they've got a number of pitches. So, I mean, Shane, if you go on to the next image, as if, there we go. So this is the entrance in, and um, I love the, the name of the, the road coming in, Slappers Hill. Um, but what you'll notice, uh, again, for the motorhomers here, there's um, a bus stop there is, there. Exactly, there's a bus stop. So uh, that will take you off into, I think it was Paynton, um, but there's, there's so many lovely little walks around the area as well. Um, we ended off driving up to little places, but what I've done is um, Shane's, Shane's taken my idea because I've done my video. I've done a little two minute video on our little trip there. And if you want to watch the full video, then head on over to, to Caravan Shorts Facebook, uh, Facebook page, YouTube channel, and you can see the whole holiday on there. But I've just given a little two minute snippet video of uh, some of our bits about the, uh, about the site. So uh, Shane, run VT. Uh, so this is the um, play field at uh, Hillhead and you can see just over there is the dog walking area. And I'm panting because I'm out of breath. <laughs> Lovely view. Right? a nice side that does matey can we just start we've got a few comments there just starting from blake's mm. four on tour um i got lost uh, lost in the dark walking back from the shower block <laughs> is that the one at the top i'm assuming that's the main shower block opposite the uh, the reception area site map. Uh, yeah i've got a site map yeah hold on one sec boop, 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 boop. there we go <laughs> Well, we've got 300 pitches there. Huh? Yeah, there's a few. There's, um, yeah, so that's so on uh, where the north is. That's the, the main entrance in. And then, yeah, there's, I mean, you can see there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pitches there. We were down on one of the red ones down near the bottom. I think yeah, like 180. The pitches I do like, mate, the ones on the right hand side. Yeah. They're nice pitches. Yes. Mm. No, it's a good size. It's a good size site um, and um, plenty going on. We were, Rear, say literally next door stone throw from the swimming pool over on that left hand side um but uh yeah it's it's a it's a big place i, I can imagine why you got lost <laughs> most important part is there a bar yes <laughs> there is a bar <laughs> there's a bar and restaurant i mean with uh, just uh here we go it's got out you know, no, like, like i say i don't know what it's going to be like now because there's there's um an indoor outdoor covered area there's an indoor bar and then you've got this outdoor area so i don't know what it's going to be like now now that we're in the the new normal um i should imagine the tables will be spaced out a little bit more and being able to utilize this outdoor space um there's also a, a kids sort of a little arcade area and yeah. um i did post up a picture that you saw in the video there was a uh, an on-site shop um, and again, they've got, as with all the shops, they've, you know, there we go, they've got loads of bits for sale, um, 
uh, sort of inflatables for the swimming pool. Um, and for us, that's that's what made it was we could have, we could quite easily have a holiday just there without going out anywhere. But we still managed to get out to see the local area, which was uh, which was brilliant. I mean, I'm just Did looking at the swimming pool. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, swimming pool. There that's, we go. That's, a, that's a nice yeah. that's a nice pool, actually. Empty. Yeah. Nice yeah. area for the kids. I mean, it's uh, the we've got in our little. We've the thing is well shade there. The thing is well shade as well. There's a nice little shallow end for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got my a belly sticks up. For him. My belly sticks up too much now to line the shallow end. So oh. where this pitch is taken from, that's like there's a little uh, uh, bar. The bar is behind you, so um, yeah, you're able to to grab a drink and in in a glass and still sit on this side. Uh, and um, they do provide um, sort of plastic cups if you wanted to go down. Um, and yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, well, we th th just around the corner. Now um, it literally is a couple of minute walk. Um, so this is this is actually on site. So that's on on site. That's one of down at the bottom of the dog walking area in the playing field. Um, that's just sort of overlooking. Um, I think it was Brixham um overlooking yeah out to the sea but it's lovely it, it, we we had a lovely holiday there but this one this is a walk to man sands now again on my video um on, on my youtube channel i show a little bit more about how you can get there and well, it is literally tonight john aren't you i'm trying to sorry guys <laughs> no i'm not I'm not not it's only because the full video it, it shows oh, off you go more. again <laughs> Right, this is what is good because at Mansands, it's it's a very um, very quiet beach we found, and you can walk there from the club site. So you literally walk out of the main entrance, hang a right, go up a little pathway that's next to the road. As soon as you come to a, a, a um, what's the best way to describe it? It's almost like a closed road. Um, like a dead end road and you follow that down and you can follow this path all the way you can go the short way or the long way we ended up going the long way but um as you come out of this tree line here you you, you basically you're going up and down through um like foresty area and then you just come out and the view is spectacular and i would honestly recommend if you've gone to this site or if you're going to it do the walk to Mansands. It is it's amazing. And we we just spent there the rest of the day on the beach. Oh, that's a nice beach. Look, there's nobody there. It's the height of summer. We literally counted on one hand the people that were there. Um, there is a National Trust, um, there is a National Trust parking uh, spot. Um, probably a good a good 10, 15 minute walk from the, the National Trust parking down to Mansands. Um, but again, like I say, I mean, you can't argue for that. It's it's amazing. It's just such a quiet little beach. Now everybody's going to be there now they've seen this. But um, mm. yeah, it's that's definitely one to do. And there's so many other th great things to do that are in the area as well. Um, and we, we, we went Why to... Why did you take a picture oh, of a dog? That's our little Jax. That's our little buddy. He loves being away in the caravan. Um, this is um, this is Berryhead, and again, one of our friends um, had had been there, and they they we're putting up on Facebook though we're, we're down down this this neck of the woods, and he said, oh, you have to go to Berryhead, and um, parking was cheap for the day. In fact, we went there twice. We went there once just to have a quick wander around, and then the second uh, uh, two days later, we took the bikes and cycled around it. It's it's beautiful, really right on the edge, um, overlooking the sea um yeah really good good day oh there we go yeah look at that and it, it's so quiet we took a, we took bikes picnic and spent the day up there oh, perfect day out picnic spot isn't it it is it really is and again it's it was quiet even in look at the weather it's gorgeous so but um yeah other areas i mean i'm just i'm just looking through our little book of uh i said the other week about where we go to and it says um hillhead devon um fab warm swimming pool nice food a bit expensive good shop visited torquay brixham and painton and and berryhead um you, it's there's so much to do in that local area just so we're covering everything here um kind of a nut said beverly park and painton is better and cheaper Mm -hmm. And I'm just picking up here, which is probably a good idea from the back, 
Beckwith, John, maybe you should get people to send your footage of sites suggested. That's brilliant. That's you a want to send brilliant your idea. Over, we'll yes. put them on. John will put them on in his little section, won't you, John? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Please, please send them over. <laughs> that would be brilliant. One minute, two minutes of the of the, um, yeah. the side that you're at, even where you're at now. And I tell you what, as well, I tell you, it's another idea, Shane. If you want, do a little review of your caravan on Motor Road. Only has to be a minute, 30 seconds. Yeah. Send them in and we'll show them. A little review of the what? Motor Their home. caravan. Yeah, so <laughs> if you're away, so our, our viewers, um, get your mobile phone out. Um, you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to, but just have a little film around. Show us what you've got. Hmm. Yeah, I'd love to see that. That's a good idea. Yeah, send them in. And uh, how they can send them in is dead simple, mate, isn't it? Mm. You know, yeah. get me on Twitter. Uh, Caravans and Camp, test Y45RP. Follow me, I'll follow you back on Instagram at the Motor Home Man. You can email your videos to us at the Motor Home Show at gmail.com. Don't forget, open mic next week. Anyone can be on. Um, anything else left to do? I'm worn out tonight. Two hours yeah, we've got tonight. It's, it's been a long one, hasn't it? It has, but I, I don't feel as tired as I do after some for some reason. Mm. I don't know but why. Can't we get to this? No. You've had a lot to do tonight, Shane. Hey. You? I have had a lot to do. I think I think it's been nice having having the video break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be interesting as well. In in the comments, quickly before we end, did did you like that? Did you like a little video on the the site? Did you like uh, Shane's video um, on the the motorhome? <laughs> it's good to get feedback, and this is it. I, We're, yeah. This show tell is the one thing, isn't I'll it? I tell you what, Shane, they've left it late. They've left you really late. Lee, Lonnie, Lonnie, Lee, Lee, Lonnie, Lonnie, Lee. <laughs> we have a week out of boot to Glastonbury last week in August, then off to the Peak District for nine days. Send us your little video in and we'll show it. We need to show the campsite. It helps other people. Lee, Lonnie, Lonnie, Lee, Lee, Lonnie. Hello, Jason, Shane and John on the Boat Road and Caravan Show. Well, that's it. The votes are in, aren't they? When are you I'm guys making your great decision? Great show tonight. Very enjoyable. Thank you very much, Ivan. I'm glad you enjoyed it, mate. We've been, I've enjoyed it tonight, actually. It has been very good. Uh, nice. I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed. I, I've really enjoyed the little videos. I've enjoyed Mark section. Um, just do the two videos. Uh, sorry, the two pictures, the caravans, and I've been, I enjoyed the the campsite. Um, we left it a bit late. Um, but it's nice to see the different campsites and everything. We're going to do a lot more, aren't we, John? Good. Yes. Yes, very much so. I was just reading the comments. Greg, next one down, Shane. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just go straight off there. Uh, that one. <laughs> John seems to be taking over the show. That's a great show. <laughs> Can <it> be one? <laughs> hey, it's working, isn't it? It's, it's something It's new um, and... It's, it's got a good feel to it. It's nice. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. We want to cover everything. So, mm. like I say, everybody's to get everybody involved, whether it's motorhomes, mm. caravans, and everything. Russ Fair has been a good show. Yeah, I've enjoyed it tonight. I really have. And I'm more open mic next week. Oh, open mic. Open mic. <laughs> yeah, anything goes. Open mic. I've said it enough times throughout the show. I'm not going to say it again. Um, shall we wrap this up? Go on. Yeah. I was going to say, open mic, do you not feel that we can relax off a little bit more? We can have a beer as well and enjoy it a little bit? Because it's it's not as much pressure on. <laughs> Shane's like, hang on a sec, no. Last <laughs> time we had a beer on the show, it got dangerous. Oh, did it? You can if you want. If you can, if you want. Oh, no, I'll stick with when, the water. When did it get dangerous, <laughs> or is that when there was us four talking? Um, no, it was when Adam was on, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You you got a happy drunk and then you've got Aaron. <laughs> that, 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 bless him. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> yeah, the Motorhome and Caravan show really enjoyed it tonight, and we're going to get open mic next week, which is just a free for all, and then the following week we get a bit serious again, doing motorhome reviews, caravan reviews, John's Jones, Askley. Uh, we're going to pack a lot in, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it'll be good. We'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, See you soon. Bye.